Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So good evening everyone. Today we will be discussing about direct variation. Okay, basically direct variation is just simply um, a relationship. Okay, a kind of relationship between two variables. Wherein the two variables, or more I mean, two variables will have a constant increase or decrease. So if one value increases, then the other value increases. And if the other value decreases, then the other value decreases. So basically, they, they have an, um, a relationship wherein um, whatever happens to the first variable, it also happens to the second variable. Okay, So that would be direct variation. And one thing that we must be noticed when it comes to direct variation is that there is a certain pattern or a constant vari variable that is present within the increase. Kasi let's take, for example, these two. The sets of values for A and the set for, of values for B. First one for A, you will notice here that the A increase is plus 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And, but for the B, it's 2, 4, 6, 8. So it's times 2. I mean, not, not times 2. I mean, it's plus 2. Okay. So there is a constant increase. And if we will try to, say, um, find... The, the next values is actually quite easy because what you need to do is you just simply need to list down 5, 6, 7, 8, and say we have up until 100 because it's just 1 by 1. Now, as for B, what we need to do here is we need to add plus 2. And this is just simply 8 plus 2 is um, 10, 12, 14, 16, and so on. But how about if it is 100 because there's... Uh, there are some missing terms within this one, within this given. So what we can do is we need now to find the relationship between the two variables. What the first thing that we did is we found the relationship between the variables all on A and all on B. But we need to get the relationship between them, okay? And to get that relationship between them will yield you the value of K. So let me just change that. K, which is also known as the constant of variation just the relationship of the changes within a and b so for us to find that what we need to do is we need to divide the values either we take b divide by a or a divide by b it will yield you the same answer so given say we divide b by a okay so b divided by a so the very first value that we will get is 2 divided by 1 which is of course equals to 2 next one for the next uh pair which is 4 and 2 we have 4 divided by 2 of course we will get 2 again and as we go with our given we will get 10 divided by 5 we will get 2 all the time that's why it's called the constant of variation because it's constant for any given value okay any given pair of a and b it's 2 2 2 2 all the way so what is the importance of this k K is actually important in getting the values of numbers way, way after our given. Okay, So getting the value of 100, the partner for B, will actually be just 200. Because if you will notice that if you multiply this by 2, which is of course our constant, 2 times 2, 4, 3 times 6, 4, I, I mean 6, 4 times 2 is 8, 5 times 2 is 10, and so on. So 100 times 2 will just give us 200. Okay. So if you will be asked, what is now 50? What is b if your a is 56? By knowing the constant of variation, which is 2, just simply multiply them together. It will give you um 56 100. I think it's 112. Yeah. And that is the purpose of constant of variation. Okay. So knowing the constant of variation, the, the next thing that we need to do is we need to establish first what is our formula. Okay, so the default formula for any inverse, uh, I mean direct variation would be this one. So first we have the statement. Okay, um, sorry, let's use x and y. Y varies directly with so this term y varies directly with x, it will be written in the formula form of y is equals to kx. Okay? Meaning we can get the k by just simply manipulating our given. If we want to find k, what we need to do is we need to 
transpose x to the other side transpose x to the other side so giving us y over x which is what we did to find k and for us to find x we just simply need to um, have y is equals to x, um, sorry k okay and this would be the relationship of these three variables the y the k which is on which is uh, hidden in the direct varies directly and with x okay so this is our formula so now that we know how to write the formula and it's actually quite easy to find the values okay what we need to do now is we need to translate okay what if your variables is not y and x okay what if your variables would be like this a varies directly with p so how do we write this down so take the val variables we have a varies directly equals k that's a constant thing to write p quite easy next just like a uh, translation of word phrases into mathematical phrases okay um say we have um k varies directly with a and c so the same the same you just simply need to write the um the variables i let's not use k sorry because k is of course the symbol for the constant of variation let's use um z yeah. so z varies directly it's equals to k that's a constant thing yan ito yan okay with a and c which is you just simply need to write a and c so it's just like again translating word phrases into mathematical phrases let's have another one something more complicated um let's undo that so we have number four we have um a varies directly sorry with the sum of a and sorry not a we have you say of y and x so same writing it down a ang varies our symbol for varies directly is equals to k with the sum of y and x. So with the sum of y and x. If you have this kind of phrase with the sum of, of and and phrase, you always enclose that in a parenthesis. So sum of y and x. So that would be it. And that is how you transform your direct variation okay, into a mathematical phrase. Because again, it's very important for you to get the mathematical phrase for you to be able to manipulate your variables to get the value of k, which is, of course, k is the most important thing in this one. I said this is the constant of variation. This is the thing that determines whether your given is direct variation or not. So now let's have an example. How do we even solve these kinds of things? Okay, so first example. We know now how to write the formula. We know how the formula works. Let's have examples. So the examples would mainly fall in this kinds of category, okay? You would be given some values, for example, um, you you were asked, you were given that. Wait, on, I'm I'm looking for an example here. Okay, so you, let's say if, sorry, what if? If y varies directly. with x and y is equals to 10 x is equals to 2 find y when x is equals to 7 so the first thing that you need to do here is you list down the variables okay so i mean create the formula so the formula can be derived from this part oh no it's just supposed to be thicker than that I think it's tough because it could be just... Wait, let me just use and circle this one. Okay. Here. And 
y varies directly with x. So what you need to do is you need to create your formula. y varies directly with x. The next thing that you need to do is you need to create the table for your given variables. You have the table for y and you have the table for x. Okay? Your value for y would be 10. If your, te if your y is 10, then your x would be 2. Now, if your x is 7, what should be the value of your y? Find y when x is equal to 7. So now, this is where um, the solving starts. Okay? First, the First thing, first step, find k. You can find k by just simply dividing the first value. Okay, the first value given is complete in a sense. Okay, your y is 10 and your x is 2. So from the formula, this one, let's uh, denote this as equation 1. From equation 1, which is y is equals to k and x, and your value for y is equals to 10, and your x is equals to 2, just do the substitution method, okay? The substitution method, your y would be 10 equals to k, which is unknown still, and you have 2. Okay, solve for this, giving you a k of 10. Bakit siya? Ay, sorry, not 10. Giving you a k of 10 over 2, or the value is simply 5, okay? Your k is 5. So now you know that your k is 5. The k is actually constant for every given pair. So meaning on this case, you, you can now put your k here. Your k here is 5. Your k here is also 5. Your k for all the given will be 5. So that is the importance of k. k will be there to support your solution. Kasi in mathematics, if the missing is 2, you cannot solve for it if you have one equation only okay so we have the k which is of course um five so next the, the next thing that we need to do is we need to find the unknown find the unknown which is in this case our unknown is the value for y y is the unknown okay so finding y would of course just simply um, demand us to use this set of values, the second set. Because we are done with the first set, this one. We are done with this. We are not yet done with this one. So we need to use this one. Okay. In this case, your still your formula would be y is equals to kx. But in this case, you don't know what y is. But you know that x is equals to 7 and your k is equals to 5. Knowing this information, then... 7, 5. Knowing this information, we can now use the formula. Substitute everything. Y, unknown, is equals to k is 5, x is 7. And y is equals to 5 times 7. The answer is 35. And this is your final answer. Okay? Let's have another example. Okay, sorry, let me just... Scroll down a little bit. Okay. Next example. Next example, say we have still y varies directly with x. Then we have all our value for y is equals to negative 4. Our x is equals to 5. We need to find y y is unknown, but our x is equals to 9. So again, the very first thing that you need to do is to find your um, formula, which is of course derived from the first statement. y varies directly with x. y varies directly with x. Create your table, your y, your x, and your k. You have negative 4 here. This is 5. This is unknown, right? Next. We have unknown y here, we have a 9 for x, and we have unknown k. In this case, the very um, the only place that we can solve would be the first one. Because this one has one missing only. Okay. So let's solve for that. Using the formula, number one, step number one, this would be um, y is equal to kx, our y is equal to negative 4, our x is equals to 5. Our k is equals to unknown. Substituting this 
negative 4 is equals to k is a known, x is 5. Solve for x, I mean solve for k. k is equals to negative 4 over 5. Since you cannot divide that anymore, this is your final answer. If your k now is equals to negative 4 over 5, therefore your k for this even would be the same. So this is negative 4 over 5. Okay, now we go here. There's only one missing here, so therefore we can solve it. Okay, so this would be um, still y is equals to kx. Y is unknown. X is equals to 9. And our k is equals to negative 4 over 5. Solving for the unknown, y is equals to negative 4 over 5 times 9. Multi multiplying this one will give us, wait, let me get my calculator. Okay, anyways, and the multiplying this one would give us negative 36 over 5. That would be the value for your y. If it's a fraction, it's okay long as we follow the rules and we did not broke any um, method or we follow every method here. Okay, then therefore, our answer would be correct okay trust your answer if you have followed the solutions okay and this would be your final answer so this is um the basic ways of solving for direct variation and everything that uh, you need to know regarding uh, um, solving it in a basic way um thank you for listening everyone and assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh